Hey everybody, and uh, welcome back. Um, what we're going to be doing now is going through a, kind of a, a, a process that I think a lot of people just don't do on a regular basis. And it's really important. Traditional game developers will do this all the time. But in Stingray, because it's not automated, uh, it's something that's going to be a process that, uh, that you don't necessarily know about. Um, so therefore, people who aren't, you know, really, you know, into the game development scene uh, might avoid this or might not even realize that it's there. But it's a really important step and it's something that is just absolutely critical to getting your game to run well. Uh, whether it be an ArcViz project or anything, okay? So, and what this is going to be is texture compression, okay? Now, texture compression means that you're going to take a file that was extremely large and you're going to try to find as much optimization for that texture as you can and you're going to compress it down and go from basically a raw format to something like a JPEG, okay? To put it into standard terms that everyone knows, right? So you don't send a TIFF file through the internet, you send a JPEG. Uh, because you want it to be smaller and it doesn't really lose much so you gain a lot of time and uh, time is really important on a video game so just like with the email analogy right like if we were to go from a TIFF to a JPEG we might go from 20 megabytes to 2 kilobytes okay so that's really a big savings and when you send that email it's going to save you a lot of time right so the same thing is true on a, a game project okay so except now we're talking about milliseconds okay and milliseconds matter on a video game okay so because you're going to be rendering all sorts of different things on your screen and all of those little milliseconds start to add up and when you have enough of them uh, you'll have latency and you'll have lag and you'll have an unfavorable gameplay or in some cases you'll actually overrun your amount of memory of your video card and you'll literally bring it to a screeching halt okay so that is definitely not what you want to do so if you, especially if you're going to be targeting like smaller devices or or lower um you know lower uh, memory devices or older computers like modern computers are starting to get there pretty pretty high with like six gigabytes of video memory so you might even know that you're getting a problem but then you send it to something like a you know a, a 680 video card and it's only got two gigabytes of video memory and all of a sudden the, the performance just tanks right so um, that's where compression is really going to matter. Uh, the less video memory you have to work with, the more your texture compression is going to matter and the more you're going to have to do to ensure that you're getting uh, better performance out of your video card. Um, so, so that's what this, this whole entire tutorial is going to be about. We're going to be going through all the different things we can do to optimize our game. Okay, so, um, so let's get started. So uh, the first thing that you want to know about is the actual texture manager. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch the texture manager. To get there, you're going to go window and you're going to go texture manager. Okay, and that's going to bring up your pane that will show you all the textures that are loaded into your game. Okay, so this is everything in our game right now. And obviously it's not a big game. We only have a, a very few assets in here. Uh, we basically have our record player and that's kind of it, right? In the record player cabinet. So, um, so this is not a good example but it'll work anyway okay so actually before we do this let's go ahead and drag our record player in the record player cabinet onto the screen so let's go ahead and do that so let's go models record player or we can actually do the, the more optimized one uh, with the rma texture which is why we would do this so this actually shows it off even better okay and we've got the record player on screen and then let's go ahead and grab the record player cabinet and grab that and drag it onto screen okay so there we have them i'm going to just focus up on it so i can kind of place this nicely so i'm going to put it at zero 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 and it doesn't really matter where we place them i'm just doing this for aesthetic sake uh, i'm going to move this guy into position and just kind of make it look nice and let's put that here where it belongs and let's just rotate it around maybe okay so now our record player is in place and now what we're going to need is a way to be able to see um, exactly how much memory we're using okay so 
what we have is a tool called Performance HUD and Artist Performance. And when we go into here, we're going to see a whole bunch of values. And this is really useful in optimizing your game for lots of different methods. Okay, so you can check out how much your shadow casters are stealing and all different things that are going to be uh, kind of telling you what is taking up your performance. So you can go through lots of steps to optimize these. But the thing that we're going to be concerned about in this uh, specific part of the tutorial is this texture right here. Okay, And as we can see, with just these two assets in the game, uh, we're already getting uh, about 531 megabytes worth of memory stolen. Okay, Now, the reason for that is that we haven't compressed any of these textures. So this number is telling us exactly how much memory uh, is being used. Well, I, when I say exactly, I mean sort of exactly. Don't, don't take this number as your only test. We will be doing another test uh, afterwards. Once we kind of get our textures compressed and we want to see exactly how much memory is being used, I'm going to show you another method for doing this. In fact, maybe we should do that now. So let's go ahead and run the game and let's see exactly how much memory is being used by our real GPU 100% guaranteed, so we can really see how much is getting uh, taxed, okay? So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch a program called Process Explorer, and you can download this for free, um, and it's a great tool, and it will really help you uh, to, you know, figure out what's going on with your memory, okay? So if we click on this little bar in Process Explorer, we're gonna get this thing that tells us exactly how much memory is getting used, okay? now. Because we're not running the game yet, we can take this as our baseline, okay? Whatever this number is on your computer, it'll be different on everybody's computer, okay? So the, don't take, like, I'm using 2.5 gigabytes, but that doesn't mean you will be using 2.5 gigabytes. I have other applications open, and things are using my memory, and that's, it, it, it doesn't really matter, okay? But whatever this number is, that's, that's the number that's going to be our baseline, okay? Now, when we go ahead and hit this play button, and launch our level, it's now playing the level, okay? If we go Alt-Tab and go back to our Process Explorer, oops, Alt-Tab, which is System Processes, we can see that it's gone up by about a whole gigabyte, okay? So our total memory consumption at this point is about a gigabyte. Okay, and that's going to tell us everything that we need to know. So this is basically what the viewport is giving us, but this gives us a real way of testing the actual game's video memory usage. Okay, very, very useful. So as, as I was saying, we've gone up about a gigabyte, okay, or just slightly shy of it, okay? So, um, so that can be a really useful tool for testing how much memory you're using, okay? So anyway, so we're going to leave that minimized for now, and... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start using the texture manager to bring this number down and that number down. Okay. So again, this is a really useful, like kind of uh, generalized number, but when you really want to test, you're going to want to use something like process Explorer where you can really see this, the GPU usage uh, on the fly. Okay. And this will really give you a good uh, amount. So we went from 2.5 to 3.4, which like I said, is about uh, a gigabyte. So anyway, so we're going to minimize that and we're going to launch our Texture Explorer. Okay, so I'm going to go Texture Manager. Oh, it's already open, so I'm going to launch it down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through a couple different ways of uh, compression. <clears throat> now, um, before we begin this, I'm going to bring up this little document that I've created uh, that is a good generalization of your... Um, of your uh, texture compression settings, okay? So I just want you to pause here and take note of these, okay? So DXT is gonna be for Windows, Xbox, and PlayStation. BC is gonna be for normal maps, your PVRTC is gonna be for iOS, and your ETC2 is gonna be for Android. There are some Androids, I believe, that are now starting to use PVRTC, but in general, you're gonna to wanna to use ETC for Android, PVRTC for iOS, BC for your normal maps, uh, specifically BC5, and DXT1, 2, 3, 4, all those are gonna be used here, okay, for your Windows, Xbox, and PlayStation. Uh, products okay um, so this is really your direct X and <clears throat> that's that's really what you're gonna need to know okay so take note of these and 
put that in a little file somewhere for you to use and just keep memory of it because these are going to be important when you're deciding which compression settings to use for what, okay? So let's go ahead and minimize that again. And let's start using that idea to go through our textures, okay? So um, the first thing is to start looking at what is in your scene, okay? So here is a list of all my normals. Now, there's another way we can get to, so if we had a smaller screen or lots more stuff, right? This might get to be a really confusing list and hard to find stuff, okay? So we have this filter here and we can type in things like normal, right? And this is gonna again show why it's so important to do proper naming conventions. Because when you have to do stuff like this and find everything in a list, having a name with like, all my normals are always named normal. Now when I need to go through here and compress stuff, I can find them very easily, okay? I just type in normal, or if I wanted to be really fancy, I can go underscore normal since I always use the underscore, and that'll make sure that I'm only getting things that are underscore normal, right? Um, really useful and powerful way to search and refine, okay? So let's go ahead and select all these, and let's go ahead and set this to BC5, okay? So BC5 texture compression. And once we do that, we're going to be pretty much set to go. And we're going to want to make sure that these are in the non-sRGB format, okay? So file, save and refresh all. And we'll see that very soon, in fact, already this number started to drop, okay? We're already seeing a drop on that number. And I'm going to show you other ways that we can really get that number to drop. But at that point, we're going to be sacrificing <clears throat> quality, okay? So right now, we're really not sacrificing any quality or very, very minimal quality okay but um let's keep going okay so the next thing i'm going to do is look for my rma textures so rma and we can start looking through anything named rma so we've got this one we've got this one this one this one and this one so let's go ahead and set these to dxt1 now dxt1 is going to be your most optimal uh dxt format um, compression setting. Now these other ones like DXT1A includes an alpha mask, um, DXT3 is going to include um, like a kind of a more high quality compression, uh, but you really only want to use like DXT3 and DXT5 if you actually need them, okay? So if it's something that's like a really like a character or something where you really need to be up close and personal with it, where you're going to notice some of those more fine little problems, um, then you might want to try these, but in general, I almost never use them. I almost always use the DXT1. So we're going to set this to DXT1, and we're going to leave this um, sRGB because the RMAs are going to be in linear space. I want this to also be in linear space, so I'm going to turn off this sRGB. Um, <clears throat> RMA materials, roughness maps, uh, metallic maps, etc., are going to want to be in linear space, generally speaking, if you're coming from substance designer or substance painter. If you're coming from Photoshop, generally speaking, you're gonna want this to be sRGB, but that's really gonna be up to you to figure out what you need, okay? But uh, but you can toy with that anyway. You can just toggle it on and off and see how it looks, okay? So without continuing on that, we're gonna go ahead and go um, file and save and reflect, refresh all, okay? So now our RMAs are done. Now what we're gonna do is look for our uh, roughness maps because I do have some of them. So I'm gonna grab my record roughness and the record player roughness, and I'm gonna set this to DXT1. And again, these are in linear space, so I'm gonna to wanna to keep them as linear. And we can now move onwards. So the next one is going to be metallic. So I can grab my metallics. Uh, I guess I don't have any metal maps. Nope, I have no metal maps. Oh, I have one. Okay, so I can set this to sRGB off and set this to DXT1. And I'm going to go File, Save, and Refresh All. Now, I'm kind of at a point where I don't know what I've got left, right? So it might be nice to just see what is still uncompressed, okay? So we have this little set of checkboxes here for what type of format are they set to? So we're going to refine by the filter itself, right? By what type of a compression setting it's got. Anything that's in this RG, R8, G8, B8 is going to be uncompressed as well as the A8, R8, G8. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this off and we're actually just going to turn on these three right here because these are all uncompressed formats. And I want to see which ones are not compressed. So the only ones I'm going to leave on are the ones that are not compressed. And as I can see here, I haven't done my base colors yet. 
Okay, and if this was a really large project, this is going to be a really useful tool because you're going to want to do this a lot because as your project grows and you have lots and lots of stuff, it's going to be hard to make sure you got every single one. So this is a really useful tool to find those, um, those textures that are uncompressed. Okay, so let's go ahead and run through these. And we're going to go ahead and set these to DXT1. And because these are just color maps and emissive maps, we're going to leave that sRGB on. Okay, so we want that on. And we're going to go File, Save and Refresh All. And now we're going to be able to see that we've lost almost a third of our memory cost. Okay, we were at about 100 and change. I mean, I'm sorry, 500 and change, and we're now at about 390. And I'm thinking that that might still be lying to us a little bit. It probably is a bit lower. Um, my guess is that it just hasn't quite updated yet. Um, my guess is that it's going to be more like 200 and change or, or high 200s. But we can find out by doing our other tests, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and do a baseline again. And let's uh, get our uh, Process Explorer open. And we're looking at about 2.2 gigabytes of video memory usage. And when we go ahead and hit the play button, we can grab our system memory again. And we should see that we're getting substantially less memory usage. And we are. We're now at only 2.3 after running it. So we went from 2.2 to 2.3 uh, with just a couple easy clicks. And as I was saying, remember I was saying that it would probably fix itself? Look at that, 171 megabytes. So we went from 500 and change to 171 megabytes uh, here, and we're seeing a substantial one gigabyte drop virtually. Pretty much, a, I mean, we're negligibly going up here. It's 2.3 gigabytes now, whereas it was um, almost uh, an entire gigabyte more before, okay? So we've really reduced our um, amount of memory usage. Uh, with just a, some, a couple easy clicks in the texture manager, okay? So so let's see what we can do to still continue to save, okay? So I'm gonna minimize this again, and I'm gonna go escape. And I, now, now, what we're gonna be doing next is gonna be a choice, okay? So this is where you're trying to eke last bits of performance, okay? Um, and I would do this after um, you've you've done everything else kind of, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into Texture Manager and I'm gonna show you some other options that we can set, okay? So let's, for, for the beginning, let's just start with the RMAs, okay? So RMA. Now you might wanna do this to your roughness or your metallics or maybe your emissive channels. There's gonna be certain channels that you're gonna to wanna to do this on. Um, your diffuse channel is probably gonna be the last one you wanna mess with or your, your color maps, okay? Because that's where you're gonna see a lot of change, okay? And doing these kind of adjustments is gonna cost the most, okay? But basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna force it to lower the resolution of things, okay? And to do that, we can go into this RMA. We're just gonna, it, it could be any texture. You can do this to any texture. I'm just being selective in which ones I'm gonna do. We could do it across the board, but we're gonna to try to be a little more careful than that. Um, if we did it across the board, I think we're gonna see serious degradation very rapidly, okay? Um, so we're gonna do it a little more carefully. So I know my RMAs, they're, they're doing roughness, they're doing metallic, and they're doing ambient occlusion. Any of those, if we lost a little resolution, it's probably not gonna be the end of the world, okay? So do you see here we have these MIP maps, okay? So here we can lose the largest MIP map or we can lose the smallest MIP maps. Now the smallest MIP maps, we're not gonna get a lot of benefit from discarding them, okay? And we would actually, in certain cases, cost ourselves m more because we would not actually have the ability to reduce the MIP maps as you move further away from the camera. So what MIP maps are is basically when you when Stingray creates your objects, okay, or your textures, it's actually creating whatever size you set it at. So let's say you imported a 2048 texture. Each MIP map would be another power downward, okay? So you would go um, 2048, 1024. So it's automatically creating a 1024, a 512, uh, 256, uh, et cetera, right? And it keeps doing that down the line. So as it gets further away from the camera, it loads up these different MIP maps, okay? And it does that automatically and on the fly. Okay, so what we can do is choose which of these MIP maps we want to actually discard. So we can say, I want to lose the top one MIP map. And we, if it was originally a 2048, it's now going to be a 1024. Okay, so if we discarded the top two, then we would go, uh, you know, it would be a 2048, 1024, 
512. So we would only have the 512 to use. Okay. So the more we in you know increase this discard the um, largest map map steps is going to be the more low resolution we get. Okay. So we're we're forcing it to be only a smaller resolution. Okay. So this is a really powerful tool, but it's also one you have to be careful of because you're you're literally cutting the resolution in half with each number. Okay. So from zero is if it's 2048 the next one if we discard one we're now cutting it in half if we discard two we're cutting it in half again okay so we really rapidly cut memory but we also rapidly cut resolution okay so we want to be very careful with these numbers so like you know one is going to be a lot okay so we don't want to go much more than one um some cases when it's something that's always going to be a distant object and you happen to have a really high resolution texture on it you might want to discard more but you want to do this very carefully and you want to check what happens after you do it okay so we're going to discard this one largest mip map and we're going to go file save and refresh all and if we look i didn't lose that much right so that's a benefit so we're kind of winning here um i want to check yeah, I still have some resolution here, even my little, my normals. Well, we didn't discard the normals yet, but we're gonna try that next. And actually, you know, let's actually do the base colors, right? So underscore base, just so I can show you how much you could actually lose by doing this, okay? So we're gonna discard the top two mip maps, okay? Return, and we're gonna go file, save and refresh all. And we're gonna see that this thing is gonna become very blurry, right? And it still actually looks fairly decent. Oh no, it's definitely blurrier. Look at that. We've lost a lot of resolution. This became very muddy, right? Um, if we look at this front texture here, that's muddy. It no longer has any definition. Especially as we get close, we start to see things are very blurry and muddy. Look at that. I mean, we're getting the normal still because we haven't lost the mip maps of the normal map, but we are really reducing the visual color map right and that's that's not looking so hot from a distance it's kind of okay but as soon as we get close we start to see that it's really falling apart okay so that's what i'm saying so you can severely save memory with this but you have to be extremely diligent about how you do it okay so i actually don't want to do this to my color maps um and i'm going to do save and refresh all and we should see that we get our color map back as soon as it's done compiling give it a second and come on now you can do it. Got it back there. We got it back here. We didn't get it back on this front part yet, it looks like. Did I do everything right? Yep, file, save, and, nope, it's saved. It just hasn't, oh, there it is, there it's loaded. Okay, so now we got that, that texture resolution back on that front bar um, and everywhere else. So now it's, it's nice and clean again. If we look at our lettering, it's nice and sharp. So very good. Okay, so let's uh let's try our normals a little bit let's let's reduce our normals by one mip map okay so let's go underscore normal and let's reduce these by one mip map uh, just to see what ends up happening i think i'll probably not want to do this because you know again it's it's very you have to be very careful about this stuff because you can overdo it really easily but it depends on what um how much you need to save right if you're going to an ipad well you're going to need to save a lot so this becomes more and more valuable um whereas <clears throat> doing it on a you know a, a computer you can probably be a little less stringent about how hard you're going to compress but again it's really going to come down to uh to this you know if you're using two gigabytes or more you can pretty much cut out anything from the 680 series and back Okay, you, you, those computers are not going to be able to run your game. Okay, because um, they're two gig, anything with a two gigabyte card and back is going to be no good. They're not going to run your game once this gets, you know, when again, not what you see here, but when you see the difference, right? So right now I'm not even, I'm barely, you know, this would run on almost any computer, right? Because we're, we're only going up on a slight fraction. Um, but if it were to go up a gigabyte, well, then we're using a gigabyte of video memory. If it went from 2.4 to 3.4, we'd be using a gigabyte. If it went from 2.4 to 4.4, we're using two gigabytes. That's it. Your memory limit is reached. Um, and really, for a two gigabyte card, you have to give them some headroom, right? Like, I'm using 2.4 gigabytes without even running the game. So, um, 
so we have to be mindful so we have to be mindful of how much um you know that they that they're going to need some overhead right they're going to they're going to need some room because their computer isn't going to be running at zero gigabytes of video memory either they're going to have something open like a web browser or something that's going to be consuming some video memory um so we don't want to overdo their memory limit, right? And we want to, if they have a two gigabyte card, you want to be at like 1.5, give them 5.5 mega uh, gigabytes of space, right? So these are all just things that are theory and you're going to have to kind of figure out where you want to be. But this is giving you the tools to be able to manage those things, okay? And that's really what this tutorial is about. I'm not here to tell you how you should compress. I'm telling you what you can do to compress. Okay, so um, so yeah, so let's go back to our texture manager and let's look over some last bits and options here. Okay, um, so we have the options for streamable if we wanted to go that route. Um, I don't normally use this. Um, it depends on what you're doing, but you might choose to use streamable textures. If so, it's just a checkbox and you can set your resonant map levels. Basically loads and unloads textures on the fly rather than just keeping them resonant in memory. Um, okay, right now what we're looking at is only what we're doing for Windows, okay? If I were to uncheck this and then go iOS, right, and now select these guys, we're gonna see that they're back to RG8, you know, R8G8B8, okay? And if we were to do this guy again, right, and just, oops, sorry, turn them all off and then turn on the R8s, and we reduce this normal, we're gonna see everything is set back to our uncompressed format again, okay? That's because we're only looking at how they're set for iOS now, okay? And this is important. So if you're deploying to other platforms like iOS or Android or WebGL or whatever, right? You need to be able to know how it's set for that specific platform, okay? And you can do it all right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start doing them now. So let's go ahead and set our materials properly. So let's start with RMA. And if we look at our sheet again, right? We can see PVRTC is for iOS. So we can go into our PVRTC textures. So RMA, I wanna do underscore because that makes it find a little bit better because RMA is also in normal. RMA, right? So that's why they come up on here as well, right? We have RMA and RMA, so it finds it. So anyway, I'm sorry, I digress. Uh, so now I've grabbed all my RMA materials and I'm in my iOS settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to PVRTC RGB2, okay? And I'm gonna go File, Save and Refresh All. Again, I wanna make sure that there is no sRGB on my RMAs, Save and Refresh All. And if I do my normals, um, we can do this to our BC5, that should be okay. And we want to go to, actually, I think for our normals inside of the iOS, I think we're going to want to be PVR, uh, RTC RGBA4. And we're going to go File, Save and Refresh All. And this is something you'll want to test, see which one comes out best. Because um, I'm not actually 100% sure which one you would want to use for your normals on that. But um, a little research would find that quickly enough. So let's go uh, Metal. Let's make sure our metal maps are done. So DC, uh, we wanna do this uh, PVRTC RGB2, file, save and refresh all. And we can probably do our base colors. So let's grab all of our base colors and set these to, hmm. PV RTC2. The fuse we can set as well. Let's check our speculars, make those PV RTC. And I'm, uh, on these guys, on these speculars, we're going to want to make sure that they're not in linear space. But on these guys, we want to make sure that they are in or that they are in linear space and that these are in sRGB, okay? So those are in sRGB now. File, save and refresh all. And what we can do is we can just clear this and do this again. Oops. Ah. Just get our li list refreshed. So these are gonna be emissive roughnesses. So we can do our roughness, roughness, 
make these PVRTC. Set our sRGB off file, save and refresh all. Now notice that this doesn't uh, lose, like it, it keeps what you've got. So if you want to get that back, just do one of those guys, you know, toggle and untoggle. Um, and now we can do our emissives and set those to PVRTC. And those are going to be uh, sRGB. So file, save and refresh all. And now all of our iOS materials are set. Okay, so if we were to send this to iOS, we'd be fully optimized. Okay, so there you have it. That pretty much covers everything you need to know about texture compression in Stingray. Um, it's a really, really important thing to do. So please do um, you know, manage this stuff in your project. Um, I've given you some great tools to be able to find and do this kind of stuff. So uh, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it was meaningful for you um, and that your games play a lot better. So if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, please put them in the uh, comments below and uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks. Bye.